Hello. A couple of months ago I made a video about a car stereo hack. In that video I analyzed and explained how my 1990s vintage car stereo works. After that I removed its old cassette drive and instead added an input jack with the help of which I could connect my phone to it, allowing me in fact to play my mp3 files on a system that was already about 20 years old. The title of that video is Car Stereo Teardown Analysis and Hack Blaupunkt Car 300 and a link to that episode can be found in the video description below. You can watch that video after or before you have finished this one. I used the possibility to connect my smartphone to the car stereo until today with great success and joy. While the stereo is doing just fine, it is my smartphone that makes problems. Until now I used a simple audio cable to connect its earphone jack to the car stereo while I was driving. Unfortunately, the earphone jack of the Motorola Moto G first generation is of bad quality. After using the earphone jacks for a while, just normally, a little spring contact inside has worn out and has lost its tension. So that the phone is now constantly in earphone mode, even if the earphones are pulled out. That means that the phone thinks that earphones are plugged in, even though they are not. This has the major disadvantage that you can no longer hear the other person when making a call. The only way to have a phone call is to use earphones or to switch to the loudspeaker, which can be a problem when you are in public. I did manage to solve this issue temporarily by bending the contact back into its original position with a needle. The only problem is that once you insert an earphone plug into the jack once again, the spring contact will again be pushed in and remain there, due to its lack of tension. Therefore I have bought a simple Bluetooth receiver for under 10 euros. I connected it to my car stereo via the input jack and in this way I avoided using the phone's audio jack altogether. But this solution is not practical, since the receiver is dangling on its wire and takes up useful space in the car. Furthermore, and even worse, its internal battery is constantly drained very quickly, so that it makes no fun to use it. Therefore, I have now decided to take the Bluetooth receiver apart, mod it and integrate it into the car stereo system permanently. And here is what I'm going to do. My smartphone's Bluetooth module is activated. It will then establish a wireless connection to the Bluetooth receiver that it recognizes and treats as a set of Bluetooth earphones. The receiver's analog audio outputs are then connected to the two input channels of the audio controller inside the car stereo, where until now the auxiliary input jack is connected. I will not delete the old jack though, but simply connect the receiver in parallel. In this way the jack could still be used. How the stereo works internally was explained in my earlier video by the way. I earlier made the observation that the output signal of the receiver is a little bit too strong so that occasionally overdrives occur, forcing me to lower the volume on the phone. To solve that issue, two trimmer potentiometers are added to the outputs allowing me to lower the voltage of the signal arriving at the audio amplifier. Until now the receiver is powered by a 3.7 volts lithium ion battery that will be removed. But in order to power this device from the car battery, a voltage regulator must step down the 12V to a value of around 3.7V first. For that I will use a simple LM317 with a trim pot that will act both as the minimum load as well as an adjustment pot for the output voltage. It is important that this circuit is not connected directly to the car battery though, but only after the relay that switches off the car stereo system. Otherwise, this circuit could drain my car battery when the car is not in use for a longer period of time. First of all, I will now take apart the Bluetooth receiver and inspect the PCB. Since the casing seems to be welded together, the gentle touch of my vise is needed to open it. Inside we find a single surface mount PCB. It has a USB jack that is normally used to charge the battery. We also see a surface mount 3.5mm audio jack, the contacts of which can be easily accessed from the outside, which is a good thing. On the surface we also have several tiny LEDs that indicate the status of the device. On the back side we find a 3.7V 250mAh lithium ion battery that I will now remove. After the battery is gone, two wires are soldered in its place. 
I now connected the wires to a lab power supply, which I set to roughly 3.7 volts. No exact voltage is needed however, since this device is normally powered by a battery that also delivers a comparatively wide range of voltages depending on its charging state. As you can see, the circuit starts up normally, just like when battery powered. Next, the car's stereo's enclosure is opened and a good place for the receiver to be installed must be found. I decided that the Bluetooth antenna, that is nothing else but these meandering paths right here, should sit directly behind the plastic cover and not deep inside the case that acts like a Faraday cage. But for the Bluetooth receiver's PCB to fit where I want it to sit, this little switch right here has to be deleted. I desolder it, cut it out and bridge over the contacts. Next. A spot on the surface of the PCB and also inside the car stereo's enclosure is roughened with sandpaper. After the surfaces have been cleaned, the PCB is glued onto the case of the switch on the front panel by means of cyanoacrylate. After applying steady pressure for some time, the PCB sits firmly. Before I start to build the voltage regulator circuit, I measure the input current of the Bluetooth receiver and it fluctuates between 35 and 70 milliamperes. Based upon that value, I decide that I will not have to install a heatsink on the LM317. In the meanwhile, I have cut a small Vero board to size and collected the components required for the regulator circuit. The parts are fastened on the board, soldered to the pads and finally connected with each other according to the circuit diagram I've shown you earlier. With all parts connected, I supply the regulator with 12 volts DC from my lab power supply and adjust the output voltage to roughly 3.7 volts. If you want to do this yourself, you have to connect a minimum load to the regulator to adjust it. Now I have also added a group of soldering posts to the board. Here most of the wires will be connected. First, I have to connect the regulator to the 12 volt rail on the output side of the relay. For that, I have to remove the bottom metal sheet of the enclosure. Now, the receiver is soldered to the 3.7 volts rail. And now, it is time to connect the signal wires. For that, I first apply some more solder to the solder pads next to the audio jack on the little PCB. Then I solder an audio cable to it and connect it to the two trimmer potentiometers on the Vero board. And finally, from there wires are connected to the input jack. I could have soldered the outputs of the trim pots also directly to the audio controller, but the solder pads next to the controller are very delicate and I don't want to put any more stress on them. Now the hack is complete. And after putting the enclosure back together and reinstalling the stereo in the car, it is now time for a test. Thank you. 